Okay, hi, good morning, uh, everyone, and welcome to Apical Scientific Live Webinar on the UV Vis Spectral Photometer. Okay, I'm Kevin. I'm the uh, Business Development Manager for the Equipment Division of Apical Scientific. Right, and I would like to thank you all for joining. I hope you all had a wonderful start to the day, had your breakfast, and it's ready for a, for a very, uh, I would say, a very fun but technical uh, uh, insight on our UVVs uh, unit as well as the fundamentals and applications of the system. Okay, just a brief introduction of Apical Scientific. We've been around for more than uh, 17 to 18 years. We've been uh, expanding our product offerings to, um, uh, to research solutions and now currently we actually established our equipment division where we provide quality instruments uh, with fast response and fast delivery. So today we'll be talking on the uh, UVV spectral photometer and especially the micro digital NABI unit. So I will pass over to our uh, principal, Mr. Sam. So he is the uh, regional manager for micro digital in Korea, and he's the, the main person in charge of this unit, and he will then uh, briefly talk to us on the system. Yeah, go ahead, Mr. Sam. Thank you, Kevin. Um, good morning, everybody. My name is Sam. Um, I'm the overseas manager in charge of Hobby and um, Southeast Asia for MicroDigital. And I'll be basically giving you an introduction of who we are as a uh, company. And I'll also be giving you an uh, in-depth introduction on our product, the Navi. So to start with, uh, let me just share my screen. I hope everybody can see this right now. Yep, we can see it. Okay, so brief introduction about our company, MicroDigital and uh, Biomedical QCT and beyond. So MicroDigital, we have been, uh, we've been founded in about uh, 2002, so it's been around 19 years. Um, we've been focusing on developing innovative industry-leading technologies in miniaturization, automation and efficiency based on precision optical technology. So we aim to become the global biomedical market leader of third generation precision biomedical total solution. And we strive for a better quality of life for everyone, as well as a healthier humanity with all our passion and determination. So a brief um, introduction about our CEO. He is the doc Dr. Changnam Kim, and he's a, he got his doctorate in Northwestern University for Mechanical Engineering in the US, and he worked as Applied Materials uh, Development Manager. And uh, he is currently has been our CEO since the beginning, so for 19 years. So to briefly speak about our corporate identity, so we, as I said, are a total solution provider. Our core technologies are optics integration, precision optical signal processing, miniaturization, unique modularization, uh, modularization technology, automation, analytical system optimization, and high sensitivity um, fluid controls and cartridge systems. So we have bio equipments and consumables. Uh, this we also have recently developed a disposable bioreactor, which I'll be going into more details in the next few slides. So we currently have the immunoassay automation industry, where we uh, have our uh, automation instruments and our uh, ELISA kits. We also have the POCT industry, where we have our low cartridge systems for diagnosis. And we also have our bioanalytical systems, which includes our NAVI, our spectral photometer. So this is a basic lineup of what our products are uh, since the beginning. So we started with the integrate, uh, sample, integrated sample banking solution, our ISDS, which is um, vacuum sealed samples using radio frequency. So it's basically, you can uh, store around five milliliters of small uh, blood samples or serum samples um, using our very integrate the solution so that it can be stored safely. We also have a microplate luminometer, our LUVI, 
And we also have Lumi, which is also a single tube luminometer. It's a small instrument for measuring luminosity of, um, for example, ATP assays. Then we have our diamond, which is our fully automatic immunoanalyzer. So it has everything that you need for um, analyzing ELISA kits, such as uh, washing, incubation, shaking, reading, everything can be done with just click of a button and one simple software. And we have our NAVI, our micro volume UV is uh, spectrophotometer. So this is uh, Korea's first and only micro volume standalone nanospectrophotometer. And I'll be talking about this in more in detail later. So we also have our FASTA, which is a um, high sensitivity POCT device. It's capable of optical performance comparable to larger automated systems such as Fitbit or Clia, but it's, uh, it uses the cartridge system, so it's much faster and more efficient. We also have our MOVI, which is our uh, microplate spectrophotometer. So basically, it's slightly different from most microplate readers in the fact that it does not use any filters. It has a monochromator, which means it can measure between 200 and 999 nanometer wavelengths in one nanometer increments. We also have our MDGen, which is our most recent product. It's our uh, COVID-19 diagnostic kits. So we have one for IgG, IgM, and we are currently developing one for SP, a spike protein IgGs as well. And We've been developing our single-use bioreactor since basically the beginning of our company. It's, uh, I'm sure you, you all know what bioreactors are for. It's for um, developing uh, manufacturing antibodies for viruses and cells, et cetera. And the problem with normal uh, bioreactors is that they are very expensive to run and they're very big. And for every run, you have to decontaminate it uh, using a lot of uh, chemicals and stuff. But with our single-use bioreactor, we have bioreactor bags as well. Um, and single-use bioreactor bags, you can just use them and then just throw them away, get a new one, and you can start the process really quickly. And we have the volumes from one liter to thousand liters. So I'll be talking more detail about Navi uh, later on, so I'll just skip over this part and just show you our Mobi. So our main competitor for Mobi is the, obviously Epoch from Biotech. And as you can see, the range is better with our, the range of the wavelengths that we can measure is better with our instruments. The bandwidth is the same, dynamic, dynamic range, resolution, wavelength accuracy, we have better wavelength utility of 0 0.1 nanometer plus or minus. We also have an OD accuracy of 1% at 2.0 and 3% at 3.0. OD repeatability at plus or minus 1% at 2.0. Uh, for Diamond, we, our main competitor would be the DS2 from Dynex in, in the US. Um, I believe they have a new instrument, the new version called DSX, which is, uh, I think, uh, the better version. but. For DS2, which is much cheaper, and uh, our diamond is very compatible. Um, we can do both ELISA and CLIA assays. And we have a better accuracy, plus or minus one microliter. We have better precision in pipetting. We also have a better washing system with residual volume of less than one microliter. Our shaking can go up to 800 RPM. Our measurement precision is high for a high concentration, 5.4%, for a low concentration, 5.3%. And we use disposable tips to uh, reduce cross-contamination of samples. For FASTA, our POCT, the main, uh, I'd say, competitor will be the PATH FAST from Mitsubishi in Japan. The test times are similar up to sample size as well, up to six samples per run and 15 to 30 minutes. We have a dynamic range of seven log, and there's basically no dark front for our, for our instrument. We use uh, active pump technology for washing, which is basically the first in the world. And the test uh, principle is the same, so clear chemiluminescence enzyme immunoassay. But we are 
public does not use any magnetic means. And for COVID and antibody diagnostic kits, um, the most similar product to ours would be the LG Chemicals Adventure or in Euro Immunes kit uh, for European uh, companies. But the test principle is ELISA, enzyme linked uh, immunoassay. Test method is qualitative. We have the target antigen. This is our SPRPD, the, the one we are currently developing. So spike protein multiplane. The assay time is 75 minutes, sample volume one microliter, which is I think we're the only one that can have such small amount of sample. And for sensitivity, we have 98.3%, and specificity, we have 99.6%. We already have CIBD for this product, and we are currently getting the KFDA approval, as well as the uh, United States FDA EUA. And for a single-use bioreactor, obviously the main competitor is uh, Sartorius from Germany. Um, they also have their uh, single-use system, but their system uses a uh, magnetic stirrer, so an impeller system. But ours is the only one that can do free blocking in the world, so orbital blocking. So instead of the wave system, which moves from side to side, ours can do um, diagonally, side left, right, up, down, diagonal, all directions. And our Selvig and so our single wave, our single use bioreactor, and our bioreactor bags are all patented in Korea. So, as I mentioned, free rocking method, rocking plus orbital, free movements of left, right, up, down, diagonal. Um, we can do convenient optimization for culture conditions and scale up. And we also have uh, cost of the kit, no oxalate parts required in the bag. And our bag film is from Lilith, and it's um, decont decontaminated using gamma rays so that there's no contamination of the samples inside. So we have Selvig 25, which is for about uh, from 3 liters to 12.5 liters, Selvig 50 for 25 liters, Selvig 100, 200, 1000. It's not on the presentation, but we have currently recently developed Selvig 3000, 500, and um, 250 as well. So we have many different sizes for many to suit many needs. So, MD's growth moment is currently we have 120 plus partners in 50 plus countries around the world and in Europe, in the Middle East, and Africa, in India, in Southeast Asia, where we have Ethical Scientific as our partner. We also have uh, partners in Japan, South America, and the US and North America. So, this is our main um, distribution uh, uh, sales tactics. So we do direct sales as well as indirect sales. So for direct sales, we usually only focus on the US market and in Korea. For indirect sales through partners and stuff, we usually focus on every other parts of the world. So what we aim to be is a global top 10 within the biomedical market by 2025. And we have actually currently, from our current estimate, we are around top 15. And that's about it for our company. And I'll be showing you our catalog. So as you can see, this is our Navi UV Boost uh, nano spectrophotometer. The light source is a xenon flash lamp, which has a lifetime of up to 60 million um, measurements. So. No matter how many times you measure, it should last at the very least seven years by our estimate. Our detector is CCD with 2048 pixels. The wavelength accuracy is plus or minus one nanometer. Our wavelength range is 190 to 1100 nanometers. Our spectral resolution is 0 0.3 nanometers. And the dimensions, as you can see, is very small, so a very small footprint. It doesn't take up too much space on your lab. As a 225 by 285 by 225 millimeter dimension. The weight is 5 kilograms, so it's actually pretty light as well, so easy to move around. And um, the warranty we usually give is one year, but this can be um, obviously negotiated so that it can be longer. And for the nanovolume specifications, our absorbed 
Absorbance precision is 1% at 100 nanogram per microliter. Absorbance range is about 0 to 300 ABS, and a 10 nanometer equivalent. Detection limit is 2 nanogram per microliter, the lowest uh, detection possible. The maximum concentration possible is 15,000 nanogram per microliter for PSD. The measurement time is about 5 seconds. Minimal sample size is 1 microliter, and RNA detection limit is 1 nanogram per microliter. And our path length is auto ranging, so it means it can change the path length depending on uh, the concentration of the samples for more accurate results. So between 0 0.01 and 1.2 millimeters. For cuvette, our beam height is 8.5 millimeters. Uh, absorbance range is from 0 0.02 to 2.0 absorbance. And protein detection limit is 1 milligram per microliter. And the measurement time is 3 seconds. So uh, why use NAVI? So for variety and precision in detection, we have many different um, uh, reading modes that I'll be showing you more in, uh, as a demonstration later on. So we have endpoint kinetic modes. Uh, we also have high-speed spectrum reading. We also have accurate detection. Um, we have protein measurements, nucleic acid measurements, uh, OD600 for cells. We also have, um, for a protein, we have Bradford, Lori, um, ECA, Burette, everything you need. The design itself, I think, is our own, uh, well, in my opinion, I might be a little bit biased, but I think our design is the best. It looks, it looks the neatest and cleanest, and it's very simple. Ours is compact, compact lightweight. And it's very easy, easy to operate with minimal steps. We have a 7.0 inch uh, touch screen LCD. The booting time is very quick. Um, if you use a normal uh, UV vis spectrophotometer with uh, dual lamps, uh, such as halogen and uh, deuterium lamps, and those require warm up time. And it's also very, it's also standalone, so you don't need a PC to use this. And with result analysis, we can also show graphs, um, the concentration for nucleic acids. We also have ratios that you will need to see the purity of the DNA samples as well. And the data backup is really soft, easy. With a, you can just do it using a USB flash drive. You can back up the data as well as the graph. You can even capture the screen if you want, so that you, and you can uh, back them up using an USB and uh, move them over to a computer. Right. So, and next, I'll give you a brief color comparison of Navi with our main competitors. So, our main competitors would be Thermo Scientific with their Nanodrop 2000C, which uh, I think is the one version behind from their Nanodrop 1, but we are also currently developing a new version of Navi to compete with them. Um, and Implant in Germany, they have their nanophotometer NP80. And also Denovix from USA, they have DS11 Plus, and also Altrian from China. So every single one of these, except for Altrian, can do both qubit and micro volume. They are standalone, except Nanodrop 2000C and Nano 100 from Altrian. We all have 2048 DCD. The wavelength range, I think, ours is the best, with 192,100 nanometers, and Nanodrop with 190 to 840 uh, MP80, with their 200 to 900 PS11 with um, 9, 190 to 840, and all sharing with 200 to 840. And yeah, so basically with spectral resolution, we have 0 0.3 nanometers, Nanodrop has 1.8, but there's it requires a special. Um, uh, specification we have HG 233.7 nanometers. And the light source, I think everyone is xenon flash lamp except for PS11, who, used, who uses a pulse xenon flash lamp, which there's not really that big of a difference. As per micro volume absorbance accuracy, the better or equal to most of them. In 
if you'd like to see this more in detail, um, from without me uh, going all the way into the code, you can just uh, ask for this document uh, to Kevin, and I can send it to you. And I can send it to Kevin so that you can um, distribute it to you guys. Our detection limit is two nanograms, as I mentioned. Uh, measure time here for no seconds. Uh, normal scientific with uh, 500 less than 500, 3.5 to 6 seconds with for MP80, and three seconds with DS11, and less than five seconds with nano 100. And also with half length, ours is 0 0.01 to 1.2 millimeters. Uh, nano drop is 1 millimeter with auto ranging to 0 0.05 millimeters. MP80 can do from 0 0.67 to 0 0.07. Um, DS11 is fixed at 0 0.5, and Nano 100 uses 0 0.2 or 1 millimeter for um, the ordinary measurements. And for Pivet, for beam height is the same everywhere. Accuracy, basically the same everywhere as well. But uh, currently, our product does not have any heating for the Pivet, but we are in the process of uh, implementing this uh, feature as well, and will be in very soon. So you, can, you don't need to worry about that, although it's only a slight improvement, I think. For detection limit, 0 0.4 nanogram microliter, which is basically the same for everyone except the nanophotometer MP80, which has 0 0.1. Maximum concentration of 75 nanogram per microliter for ours, and there's uh, uh, our competitors are higher, but I highly doubt you will need that. And the measurement times is basically the same. Now, I'll, be stop, I'll stop sharing my screen so that you can see the product itself. Can you see? Can everyone see? All right. That should be. So, this is the Mavi UV based uh, spectral photometer that I mentioned. As you can see, uh, I'm not sure if you can see clearly, but I'll just try my best to show it to you. Hopefully, everyone can see the screen. Sorry about that. Um, so as you can see here, this is the main screen that you will see once you log on um, to the Navi and you turn on the instrument. And actually, you might not be able to see it, but there is also a light here that will indicate that the instrument is turned on if the screen is uh, in uh, safe mode. And as you can see over here, there's the nucleic acid measurements, which you can go on by clicking. It's very simple. If you go on the main page, there is also the protein measurements for Bradford, Glory, BCA, Buret, uh, and direct UV. And for others, you can actually set your own wavelength that you require over here. You can set it as uh, however you want it. If you require the measurement to be at, um, let's say, 500 nanometers, you can just click 500, enter, and that's it. Pretty simple. And or we also have kinetic measurements where you can set the measurement time and interval and also the wavelength and then and the Navi will continuously measure. Um, let's say you set the interval as one minute and you set the measurement time as six minutes, 60 minutes, then you will measure the Navi will measure every minute for 60 minutes, so 60 times, and you will see you'll be able to see the graph of the concentration change or however you want it. So we also have spectrum measurements where you can set the wavelength range. So let's say 200 to 850, 850 which is uh, the general wavelength that most people use, most commonly used wavelength. And and you can and if you start measuring, you have to set the blank first, obviously. But if you start measuring, it will measure between 200 and 850 for the whole spectrum in one nanometer increments for the whole um, spectrum uh, for the sample. And it will show you a graph 
as well as show you the peak wavelength that will be displayed here and the absorbance at that wavelength. And you can also search um, which wavelength to look at. So if you measure between 200 and 850, and the highest peak was at 360, but you want to see what the, uh, the absorbance was at 400, all you have to do is type in 400 here, and click the search button right next to it. Now, we also have the endpoint where you can um, set up the wavelength and just measure the uh, absorbance continuously. We also have OD600, which is for cell counts. So wavelength is set at 600, and you can measure them um, continuously just by setting blank and pressing read. So I'll just show you a couple of demonstrations on how to use the nucleic acid and protein measurements. So you go on to nucleic acid. For nucleic acid measurements, usually, um, since the DNA samples are very expensive, that's why there's a micro volume measurement so that you don't have to use that many, that much samples at once. Also for, if you want to measure nucleic acids using a cubette, you're gonna have to get a very expensive uh, quartz cubette as well. So for measurements, let me just get my pipette and disposable tip. First, what you need to do is, just in case there's any contamination here, you just wipe this using Kimtech uh, or any wipes, uh, clean wipes that you have. Take the blank here, which is actually a TE, TE buffer. So for DNA, uh, DNA and nucleic acid measurements, you need TE buffer. And you pipe it and drop it onto the pedestal. So if you like to take a look, there's the little pedestal that we use, and there's the little, I'm not sure you can see it that well, but there's the little bubble of buffer on top of it. And this, which I forgot to mention, is what we call a cubette stick. So when you're measuring microvolume, because um, the results may differ depending on, uh, because of the cubette measurements going on at the same time, you just need this thing to cover the block. And this is obviously provided with the instrument. Next, all you have to do is close the pedestal. And click blank. Yes. And you'll hear the sound of the motor moving. So it's basically um, adjusting the uh, length uh, that the column is made so that you can measure. And that's that. And it's already done. So next, you wipe it. And we do recommend use uh, blanking at least twice in the beginning, right at the beginning, because there may be a slight contamination of the pedestal in the beginning from uh, you know not using it for a long time. There might be dust that you don't want uh, messing up your results with. Blank again. Yes. Next, you take a sample. So this is our uh, QC sample that we use for quality control. Um, it's a salmon sperm DNA from Thermo Scientific. And when we measured this this morning, it should be at around 165 uh, nanogram per microliter. So I bet this much and Close and click me. And voila. Right. So, the 
as you can see, if the result is not what you expect, or you use it's very simple, it means I did the film wrong. <laughs> Sorry, it's, I need to actually stand up to this voice is a bit uncomfortable. So blend again. And if you read again, excuse me, uh, <laughs> it's been a while since I've actually done a demonstration due to COVID, COVID and stuff, so I seem to be getting the pipetting wrong. <laughs> So when you're pipetting the blank, it really you need to be really careful. Otherwise, um, if the blank is wrong, then the dis then the results will also be well wrong. So it needs to be done very carefully. Hmm. This is very embarrassing, but please bear with me your second. I'm oh, sorry about that. Yep, finally the blank is correct. It's been a while, so so if you look at the Results, it's 168, so it's three different from what we measured in the beginning, uh, in the morning. So uh, about three over 168. So the CV for most of our measurements is around 3%, less than 3%, or not for most, for every measurement, it should be less than 3%, and with three over 165, it should be around, let's say, 0. Point, uh, about 1.8%. And you can tell that the uh, sample is pure by looking at the ratios, mostly uh, the 260 over 280 ratio, which if it's over 1.8 and in between 1.8 and 1.9, it means the sample is very pure. And for 260 to 230 ratio, if it's over 2.0, then that's fine as well. So when you heard the um, measurements going, you probably heard one week. So I'll let me listen to it once again. One second. So that's the sound of the motor moving and one measurement. Pipetting is a little bit difficult if you're not a skilled technician, um, which unfortunately I am not, but I do practice for demonstrations, but it's been a while, so please bear with me. Sorry about that, 161.4. So if you hear one distinct um, uh, measuring sound, that means it's measuring at the first uh, step 
there are three steps in total. First step is for uh, con low concentrations, two steps is for medium concentrations, and three steps for high concentrations. So as you can see, um, infrared measurements, uh, CV as well, is actually pretty good for an instrument, as long as you get the fact that you write, which unfortunately I'm not doing that well. And if you hear two distinct sounds when it should be one, then that means you've done the fact that thing wrong, like I did. So let's just move on from this example. Let's go on to um, what should be 600, but what we measured is around 675 in the morning. The DNA samples, if you leave it, uh, if you make it, if you dilute it, uh, let's say about 12 hours ago, and then you leave it out for a while, then it will go up because of the um, evaporation. So if you move this, so 503. But as you can see, this you can see that this is very uh, wrong results because of the ratios: 2.473 to 3.839. I probably should have invited our engineer here so that he can type it properly for me and do the demonstration. But since none of the English speaking ones are currently available, I have to do it myself. Apologies for that. All right, so 781 to, yeah. So when you're done measuring, you have to make sure to wipe this area, the pedestal clean. And I'll also show you the, the 1,300, or what should be 1,300, which is around 1,350. And you'll be, because this is medium concentration, you'll be able to hear two, yep, two measurement sounds, or three, depending on the concentration. All right, if it falls like this, the best thing to do, not panic, just blunt again. Most of the time, the problem if you're getting faulty results is if you look at the pedestal here, when you pipe a thing, if you don't get it onto the little, um, there's a small hole in the center of the column where the light goes through. If you don't get it onto that column, then usually the results will obviously falter. <clears throat> There we go, that was the 600 that we used before. And the 1300, 75, good.
and then again 1372. So for that, for DNA measurements, all you have to do, and you can also search, oops, I can't do that. you can also search for the data that you did just by clicking search at the top of the screen, and you can go into, you can search for anything within the screen. You can use, look at DNA, RNA, uh, protein, OD600 endpoint, and you search all that you can see, all the results that you did uh, with the timestamps and everything. And you can also delete it. You can do data transfer here, or you can change the title of the essay that you just did, so that maybe you can. It's um, by default it's called Untitled 01 and 02. And if you go back to the main screen, you can go. So for nucleic acids, our Navi does not um, uh, basically it does not support cuvette measurements because uh, you would need a special type of cuvette for nucleic acid measurements. Uh, basically quartz cubits, and it requires a lot of samples and most people do not use it, so we decided not to add that function for it. But for everything else, you use a cubat measurement uh, for it. So all you have to do is remove this. Uh, so let's try a cubat measurement yeah, with the cubats, uh, the samples we have ready here. Um, we have OD600 measurements ready, so when you're measuring with a cubet, you gotta get the blank, which is usually just uh, distilled water. If you look at the cubet, usually you will see an arrow marking which way it should go. And for Navi, there is also an arrow next to the cubet uh, in certain area over here. You can see. I'm not sure if you can see. There's an arrow over here that you can see to where, um, basically, which direction you want your cubet in. So all you have to do is match the arrow with the arrow, and insert, plus blank, blank. Just in case, one more time. That's it. For cubet measurements, very quick, very easy, very simple. Uh, this one. And this, we just click insert the cubet, click read, and you can see the concentration, that com the absorbance that comes up, which is 0 0.581, which is a uh, and when you're measuring cubets, um, it's not recommended to measure straight afterwards. I mean, you can, you can read it like this, and then you click again and read. But this can result in fluctuation. So we usually, uh, due to the, uh, due to there being, see, these cubets are very sensitive. So if you measure too many times at once, then there might be black spots that appear on the cubet. And that might uh, screw with the results, so skew the results. So we uh, recommend at least waiting about three to five seconds before uh, before measuring again. So you can see 0 0.581, 0 0.578, 0 0.582. So pretty um, standard. And you can see here, we measure this, which is, should be higher concentration, 0 0.869. Zero point eight seven zero. Zero point eight seven one. So very good CV. Should be about less than one percent. I'd say. Um, that's it for the cubet measurements. I mean, for all these six hundred cubet measurements are very easy. They're not difficult at all. All you have to do is make sure to put in the cubet uh, in the right direction. Really, you should not put it in a different direction. For example, if you, you're supposed to put it like this, but if you put it in like this, then the measurements will be very weird. So if you're getting weird measurements from the cubet, um, first, try re-blanking, and second, make sure that the cubet is in the right direction that you want it to, with the arrows pointing the same way. Now for protein measurements. So for direct UV, for protein, we have um, 
true bed measurements for everything else except for direct UV because direct UV measures at 260 and 280, which is uh, the UV range. You can see here 260 and 280. And for UV range, you cannot use the normal plastic cuvettes. You will need to use uh, quartz cuvettes because plastic cuvettes cannot uh, have that wavelength pass through it. So that's why for this, this uh, we uh, use the micro volume as well. So insert the cuvette stick to stop the light from going in there. And next we have protein samples. For, as I mentioned before, for nucleic acids, you use a TE buffer. But for um, protein measurements, you use distilled water as a buffer and blank. So you insert the DW. Oops, that's, that's very wrong. Place it onto the pedestal, close, that's fine. Oh yes, I forgot to mention, but for micro volume, we, the sample size that you need is one uh, microliter. So for example, all you need is one uh, micro pet that can do between one and 10 microliters. But we do recommend using 1.3 microliters or 1.2 to 1.3 because for one microliters, the results may slightly vary due to there being uh, not enough sample to make the column properly. So the technology is that this part of the pedestal and the bottom part of the pedestal basically hold the bubble. Uh, the little sample in between itself, in between the two pedestals, and it will um, move up and down depend to make a column of uh, sample, and the light will pass through that column. So depending on how concentrated it is, the uh, pedestals will be further apart or very close uh, together. So for higher concentration, the pedestals will be closer together so that it can measure uh, more accurately. And as usual, in the beginning, it's recommended to do blanking at least twice. Next, let's take this sample. And when you're pipetting protein samples, they're very easy to pipette incorrectly due to their viscosity. It's easy to make bubbles form. So it needs to be done very carefully. If there's a bubble on the column, then it's, uh, it won't measure properly. So you have to do it very slowly and take your time pipetting it. Not panic. Not panic. Just need to blank it again. Making sure that the blank is properly above the pedestal. Close blank. And you can see, this is the correct uh, graph for proteins. So it has 2.265 at 10 millimeter path, 10 millimeter path, 280 at 3.344 path. So 
So if you see a graph that doesn't look like this, the, with a peak um, around uh, before 200 nanometer wavelength and a little bit of uh, dip and going back up to the peak at 280, if the graph looks different from what it is shown here on the screen, and that would mean that you would need either the sample is um, uh, contaminated with something else, or it would mean that you would need to pipette the sample again. So if the graph looks wrong, we just recommend doing it again. And we'll try it with a different concentration. So you can see. Oops, okay, that's very wrong. As I mentioned, for protein samples, it's very, uh, you need to be, you need to take your time and be very careful, otherwise it will form bubbles when you're pipetting it. And 3.297. So again, CV, very good with the graph looking exactly in the same shape. And let's try with a higher concentration sample this time. Six point eight, All right, which is correct. Just try again, and as we see, the graph again, the values might have increased, but the graph shape it should be the same. Yeah, that, see, uh, I'll just show you just as an example. This is how it looks when it has bubbles on top, and that does hurt. If it has a bubble, then you really should not measure it because that will. That will basically mess with the results due to the bubble. The light passing through it will not be able to measure properly. Hopefully, this won't because the bubble just popped. No, so it's fine so long as there's no bubble. 6.947. Now, I think I forgot to show you the how the graph should look like for uh, nucleic acid, so I'll just show you one, just once more. So again, for nucleic acid, you need TE. That and blank. <clears throat> so while we're waiting for it to blank, for uh, nucleic acid measurements, we usually recommend doing the lower concentrations first, as you go uh, and move up further, uh, move up the concentration. Because if you do the higher concentration first and go back down to a lower concentration, um, that might, uh, because of the res uh, residual um, stuff left on the pedestal, it might mess with the results. So even if you try to clean it as well as you want, um, it sometimes leaves some uh, resi residue behind. So if you're going back down to lower concentration from higher concentration, then we recommend doing the blank again so that you can clean the pedestal using the blanks. Now, see, as you can see, the graph for this should look like this. With a dip around 230, 
and peak at 260 and going down towards 300. So this is how the graph should look like. If the graph looks differently, then you will probably need to blank again because there's, that means there's a, a contamination somewhere on the pedestal. Um, and if the graph looks really wrong and the ratios are also wrong, then that means there's something wrong with the sample. If, for example, the 260 to 280 ratio is around 3.5 or something like that, then that means the DNA purity has been compromised and you will need a new sample or you need to vortex the samples again. Now, to since I've shown you the results of the how to measure using um, qubits and microvolume as well, I'll show you how you can use the other functions that Navi has. So, if you were to look at the main screen over here, we have other uh, setup, account, search, and power buttons as well. Um, so, for if you press accounts, you can add new accounts or you can swap between the accounts you want. So, for example, if you wanted to add a new account, just set up an ID. Um, let's say um, test. And simple as that. You make a test account. If you want to swap to it, press swap. And uh, since there's no password, just press OK and you have swapped. Or you can also edit an account. Yeah, you can edit the name of the account by clicking edit. And you can enter, since I didn't put a password last time, you can just enter a password you want. Um, let's say, um, let's say one, two, three, four. Then retype the password. One, two, four. Just OK. And you have your uh, password for the account. And if you'd like to delete an account, Click the account that you want to delete, press delete, and we'll say, are you sure you want to delete this selected ID? Say yes, and you'll have to enter the password. So other people cannot delete your accounts that you've made. One, two, three, four. Okay. And it's gone. There's also a guest account that you can use in the beginning. So anyone who doesn't want to make an account, you can use the guest account. There's also the master account, but that's for engineers and technicians only. So I think only Kevin will be able to know this, the password for it. So next you can obviously search for the results you want uh, again. So from for OD6, you can also set the date, um, the time uh, that you want to search between. So if you want to search between, let's say, uh, July, from July, July 18th of July all the way to 18th of August, uh, then you, all you have to do is click that and click search. And obviously, since we didn't have any data at the time, it will say data cannot be found. But if you just click all, Yeah, so once the data is there, you can search it for this as well, from this page as well. All right, since I've just switched the accounts, of course, since, yeah, sorry about that, I got confused for a second because I switched the accounts since there's no uh, results that you, measurements you made with this account. Uh, there's no data, obviously, but and you cannot see this. Hold on one second, please. And we're back at master, and we'll be able to search the accounts. Apologies. If you click all, then you'll see the measurements that we did uh, previously for OD. And if you click them, you can also click them uh, multiple multiple ones at once. And you can just uh, click data transfer to use a USB. So you can you can transfer the selection or all of them at once. You can just click selection, 
and but there's no USB connected to this right now, so it will say there's no USB disk. But if you have a USB, it will um, transfer the data to the USB. You can also delete the data. Press delete. Are you sure you want to delete the selected data? You say yes, and it's gone. So if you look at this, uh, you click the data you want to see, you press detail, then you'll be able to see uh, the measurement wavelength and absorbance that you used, that you got for that uh, data. And if you were to look at nucleic acid, oops, if you were to look at nucleic acid results, all, and you click the data you want to see, if you click uh, multiple ones at once, and if you press detail, you'll be able to see them overlaid like this. So three results with three different concentrations showing the same uh, looking graph just slightly squashed for the lower concentration because they're uh, because of the concentration uh, range for the y-axis. You'll be able to see this, and you can also even capture this, but you will need to have USB, di USB disk, uh, USB drive, uh, which is on the side here. You can see if you have a USB inserted, then you'll be able to capture the results that you want to show. And simply just press back, and you can come back to this search page. As for the setup, there is not much that uh, non-technicians can do. But if you ever need to look at the system information, all you have to do is press this. And you'll be able to see the version information for the UI, the software. You'll be able to see the serial number and who it's made by. So serial number, this one is MB1E. Uh, 2210804, and the version is 3.705. We uh, have a new version of software um, to every around once every three months or so, so that we can, uh, so because we get feedback from our users and our, our partners on features they want to add or bugs that might ever be present in the software, and we usually update them for you if you ever need them. And also, you can format the database by clicking this and get rid of all the result data. Or you can also get rid of all the user accounts. You can also get rid of the standard curves that you made for protein measurements. Or you can just format them all at once. We recommend uh, formatting the data at least once every one or two years because um, the memory is not a problem, but it might slow down the software itself if there's too much data. So back it, back up everything, and then format result data, and we'll remove everything that you want. Next, you can set the time. Uh, it's currently 12.06 in Korea, so the time is 12.06 here. And you can set the date as well. Just click uh, OK, complete. Um, if you ever have a software update, I think Technicians will do it for you, but all you have to do is get the software, the new version of the software in the USB, insert the USB to the side of the machine, click update, and it will just do the do everything else for you. But currently, obviously, no USB disk, so this error will come up. Let me actually go back to if there's also the master setting, which you really should not touch if uh, you're not a technician and you do not have um, or guidance on how to uh, set the master settings. And that's about it. Um, does anyone have, if you have any questions about the Navi functions or 